here we have a new Samsung A-series mid-range phone, the Galaxy A35. Samsung's lower tier mid-rangers get more and more features every year, so what does the A35 bring to the table? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. Samsung's A30 series is back with the Galaxy A35. While nothing too crazy, it does bring some changes over last year's Galaxy A34. This year you get a new chipset and main camera, Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, plus a glass back panel and tougher glass on the display. The A35 looks the same as many of the recent Galaxy A phones, with the flat back and separate camera rings. Like I mentioned, the back is made of glass, not plastic. You still get a plastic frame, and a new design element is that the frame protrudes a bit, where the power and volume keys are. Overall, the phone feels solid and well-built. And you get IP67 rated ingress protection against water and dust, just like on the A34. Also like last year, the screen is a 6.6 inch OLED, with a 1080p resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate, but the Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection is something new. The display looks good overall, with plenty of sharpness and contrast. There is no official HDR video support here though. The max brightness is very similar to the A34s. We measured a maximum of around 440 nits with a manual slider, and this can boost over 1000 nits in auto mode when needed. One upgrade we did notice was that the smooth 120Hz refresh rate is adaptive this time around, able to dial down to 60Hz when the screen is idling to save energy. As before, the Galaxy A35 has a pair of stereo speakers. They have good loudness, and the sound is great, with rich vocals, solid highs, and some bass. You can wake up and unlock the phone with an under-display fingerprint reader. It's quite responsive. And the A35 comes with 128 or 256 gigs of storage on board, and that is expandable through microSD. The interface of the phone is Samsung's latest One UI 6.1 on top of Android 14. It brings some optimizations over the previous software version, but on this mid-range device, you don't have the new Galaxy AI features. Those are limited to the flagships for now. Also, unlike the flagships, you don't get 7 years of software support here, but 4 years of major OS updates and 5 years of security patches is still decent. We have a dedicated video about One UI 6 you can check out if you'd like to find out more about its specific features. The Galaxy A35 packs an Exynos 1380 5G chipset. It's the same chipset we saw on last year's higher tier Galaxy A54, and is a clear upgrade over the Dimensity 1080 in the Galaxy A34. In benchmarks, the A35 isn't a standout performer. The performance is about middle of the road these days. But for the price range, it's still rather competitive. And in your day-to-day -day use, the phone runs smoothly, without hiccups. The Galaxy A35 has a 5000 mAh battery, and the battery life is good, with the phone earning an active use score of 12 hours and 26 minutes. It did great across the call, video, and even gaming tests, but the web browsing time is somewhat average. There's support for 25 watt fast charging here, and the charger doesn't come in the box. With a proper adapter, we were able to charge from 0 to 52% in half an hour, and a full charge took 86 minutes. Now we have the cameras. There's a new 50 megapixel main cam, and that's paired with an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro camera. Photos from the main cam come out at 12.5 megapixels due to pixel binning. Their quality is really nice, with plenty of detail and relaxed processing, with a natural look. Colors are saturated, but not over the top, and there's solid contrast and dynamic range. The main cam is competent when handling people and faces as well. Textures and skin tones both look very natural. While there's no telephoto cam here, the main cam's 2x digital zoom is decent. These photos are a bit softer than their 1x counterparts, but other than that, they have pretty much the same characteristics. In low light, the A35 uses an automatic night mode, which does a pretty great job, and triggers quite consistently on its own. In these photos, the detail is there, and you get pretty wide dynamic range, and colors look nice and saturated. 4K video from the main camera is quite good, especially for the class. There's enough detail, and while the colors are a bit too saturated for our taste, they still look good. Dynamic range and contrast are both great. There's also electronic stabilization enabled by default, and it does a very good job at smoothing things out. The main camera captures okay videos in low light. 
There is a good amount of detail, saturated colors, and pretty low noise, but light sources are badly blown out. Now the ultra wide cam. Its performance is decent for the class. There's enough detail and good contrast and dynamic range. Also, the colors match the main cams well. Low light shots from the ultra wide camera are very soft and noisy. The dynamic range is decent with relatively well controlled light sources for this sort of camera. 1080p footage from the ultra wide isn't appealing. It's very heavily sharpened and processed looking. The 5 megapixel macro cam takes usable close ups with okay detail considering the resolution. There's a 13 megapixel front facing cam for selfies and 4K selfie videos. Selfies look great, there is no autofocus, but faces come out sharp and detailed, and skin tones are nice and natural. So there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy A35. We welcome the new glass build, the adaptive screen refresh rate, better speakers, and upgraded chipset. The photo and video quality are solid, and overall there's not much to complain about here. In the end, you get something quite similar to last year's A54, but in the A30 series. And as a well-rounded mid-ranger, the Galaxy A35 is worth recommending. Thanks for watching guys. If you're looking for alternatives, you can check out the Xiaomi Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. Or you could save a little bit of money with the Galaxy A25. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.